are those who study Islam and Quran, master recitation and tajweed, and teach it to others, share that blessing with others. So if you don't have that skill, go learn it with your child. Instead of going to, let's say, take a karate class together, go take a Quran class together. Learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me ask you another question. <clears throat> Do you speak Arabic? Or let's say not speak, but can you read and understand Arabic? Why am I saying that? Is it because I'm Arab? No. It is because I'm Muslim. And I was blessed to be an Arab, alhamdulillah. So it made it easy for me to learn Arabic. And I understand the struggle that you Muslims have to go through to learn Arabic if it was in your first language. It is a struggle, but it's worth going for. And it's worth suffering to get the result that you need. As Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, we need to read and understand and comprehend Arabic language because it is the language of the Quran, and it is the language of the Sunni, and it is the language of Ahlul Jannah. You have to understand that, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Go take a class with your child. Go take a class with your daughter, your sister. Learn Arabic. Comprehend it. Master it. Be good at it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah, Inna Allah yuhibbu idha amila ahadukum amalan an yutqina. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the person who when they wanted to do something, they do their best at it. They do a good job at it. They thrive to do better and better. We can never be perfect, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, but we have to try our best to improve and keep on learning. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمًا طبعا والمسلمة is not part of the hadith طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم the word muslim include male and female but I said ومسلمة so you can comprehend that I'm talking to male and female it is mandatory and obligatory and each muslim male or female to seek knowledge and I'm not talking about getting a PhD in philosophy or to be a physician or a mathematician and I'm not demeaning that either it is part of life, and if you have good intention, you will be getting good deeds for it. But it's, ma it's mandatory on every Muslim, male or female, to learn the religion. Share it with others, teach it to others, and apply that knowledge to their daily life. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to really think about this question I'm going to ask. How many names of the Sahaba you know? How many names of the Sahaba you know? How many stories of the Sahaba you know? Ask your child the same thing. You will be shocked. You will be saddened to find that the majority of us don't know nothing. We might know Abu Bakr Siddiq. We might know Umar al-Khattab. But our children are a lot of time when I test them, they say Abu Bakr, Umar. What's their last name? They don't know because they don't care or they were not taught by anybody we're supposed to follow in their footsteps we're supposed to know the biography of these honorable sahabi and companions to follow them to take their wisdom and knowledge and even before this dear brothers and sisters in Islam what do you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what do you know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what do you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you know any of his names? The meaning of his names? How to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with true tawheed, without associating any partners, not even by mistakes, without seeking tawassul from a, a, a scholar or a pious person, without falling into bid'ah? How much do you know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your honorable prophet? the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much do you know about him? 
What do you know? That his name is Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib. That's all you know? Do you know how much he suffered? What he went through to deliver this message? So Islam can reach us? Do you know? Subhanallah. We say that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say that we love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we only say it. The true meaning of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to obey them, follow them, to do what they tell us to do and avoid whatever they tell us not to do. To do the halal and stay away from the haram. To defend them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anybody to defend him. But we have to defend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody's talking bad about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to stop it. If you can't stop them, you walk away. When people are insulting our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to step in and defend his honor. Not because he needs it. But we need it. He's done so much that if you spend your life reading how much he's done, you can never be the same. Subhanallah. Fear Allah, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Understand that we have to really be true Muslims. We have to learn. We have to apply and do that in our life. Actions. We have to put these actions in life. And we have to teach it to others and share it with others. Especially starting with yourself, then your spouse, then your children and family. That's how you start. That's how you start. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, wa quuduha al-nas wa al-hijara. Allahu Akbar. Oh, you believe. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Jahannam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made its fuel men, humans, and stones. Watch out over your wives and spouse. Watch out over your children and your family. Be protective over them. Protect them from sinning. Protect them from shirk. Protect them from bid'ah. And the only way to do that is by studying your religion and share it with them. That's the only way, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Our children is the, is the future of this Islam, the future of the Muslim nations. And we have to do a good job at it, otherwise we, we are in big trouble. Because when they sin, we are getting part of that without even them losing any part of it. In fact, we might get even worse because we're the one who ignored the, the problem from the beginning, and we're the one who did a messy job at teaching them their religion. I'm sure of it that you try to send your children to the best schools. You hire the best tutors to tutor them in math and chemistry and science. But when it comes to Islam, when it comes to Quran and Arabic, you do nothing. In fact, you are too cheap to even hire a tutor to teach them their religion. You might 